Hello everybody, I'm here for the Hero Game Channel and welcome back to another What If scenario. Today's we'll be seeing us play as Ukraine and of course seeing what would happen if the anarchists were to take control. Good old uh, Makno, Nestor Makno. So yep, yeah, we're using uh, Dreams of a White Russian Victory, that mod, the fantastic mod that it is, we are using that. And we're going to start off by doing... This little focus tree over here and get into the uh, the Hitman's Parade so we can, uh, well, assassinate his ass. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of him. He is going to go. Anyway, it's the breadbasket of Eastern Europe. Let's go. Now, I'd also like to point out that I have, have got um, expert AI on. I've not really messed around with the settings too much. Um, I don't know if there's anything here that actually tells us that it's on. But it's on. It is indeed on. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I might have to mess around with it, make it a little bit more harder for me when I do an actual playthrough with Expert AI on. But it's on just so I can see what it does. Well, here's the Hetman's Parade. The time has come for the annual celebration of Ukraine's independence and the creation of the Hetmanate. The Hetman and his government have spared no expense for preparing a lavish parade showing off Ukraine's economic and military might. Fortunately, the plight of the common man in terms of economy seems to have been lost on the, on the officials. It has turned out to be counterproductive. When in the pro-Cossack neighbourhoods of Kiev cheer on the soldiers and performers as they pass, many streets are eerily quiet and empty, with only the music of the marching bands breaking the silence. The turnout for this parade has been even worse than last year's. On a rooftop adjacent to one of these nearby, uh, near abandoned streets, a lone man with a rifle prepares, double-checking the condition of his weapon and its optics. He wishes to also partake in the festivities, showing off a performance of his own. The soldiers around the corner begin marching down the streets in unionism. Then they are followed by the first marching band. Finally, he sees his target at the streetcar carrying the hetman and his wife come into view. He sets his sight on the hetman's forehead, releasing his breath and refrains from taking another, allowing his hands and arms to maintain steady. After what feels like an eternity, he squeezes the trigger, and the crack of his rifle echoes down the street. It is a difficult shot to make, though not the most challenging shooter has ever faced. Still, mistakes happen. Even the greatest sniper can miss. The assassin's bullet hits the hetman's wife, but the hetman is slain. Well... He's gone. He's hella gone. And we do have chaos, strife, and disorder, which is really, really not good. And an empty capital. Right. Let's go ahead and do the fall to the assassination. Ukraine descends into chaos. The assassination of the hetman served as a trigger for uprisings by multiple political groups, including Republicans, fascists, communists, and anarchists. Although it's not clear which group is behind the hetman's death, it is obvious that the groups are not working together, as open fight in the streets of Kiev shows. In the midst of the chaos, many of the Cossacks who served in the Hetmanate have fled in hiding as lynch mobs roam the streets seeking them out. The government of Ukraine has simply dissolved, seemingly overnight, and the cities have plunged into chaos. One faction gained a lot of momentum are the Republicans, and we're not going to read about the Republicans in any Finally, rumours have begun spreading that Nestor Makhno, anarchist revolutionary and leader of the Black Army in the Russian Civil War, has returned to the country to reignite the anarchist revolution again. The rumours have not been confirmed true yet, but if he really has returned, a group that wants to embrace the current chaos and anarchy may soon join the political battlefield. Ahaha! <laughs> and so he does. He has returned. Embrace disorder. The return of Nestor Makhno. Since the Hetman's assassination, Ukraine has been a, in a state of anarchy with multiple factions vying for power. Fortunately for Nestor Makhno, he had recovered from a bout of tuberculosis a couple of years earlier and was in fit enough condition to hurry back to his homeland to take advantage of the chaos. Soon after arriving, he rallied bands of anarchists and peasants opposed to the other political factions and led them in seizing Kiev and several other major cities. There is still much instability across Ukraine, but in an anarchist state. This is not uh, to only be expected, it is also embraced. Anarchy has taken hold of Ukraine, but Ukraine shows no intention of wanting anything else. Maknovia cannot join factions. We have the Revolution Insurrectionary uh, Army, replace chaos, strife, and disorder with embrace and disorder. Becomes a field marshal for us. Father of Anarchy, the leader of free territory. Oh, and boom, there we are, Macnovia. Embrace disorder. And now nobody is going to like us, because we're anarchists. If only the anarchists were to take over in Spain now, could you imagine? Oh, we're actually able to change our name to the United Free Territories. Let's do it. Also changing our flag. Yeah, I like that. I like that. We're going to get ourselves a glorious anarchist economy. We're going to remove our uh, agricultural economy. We're going to change a lot to collectivized society, which has some really nice stuff in here. Well, seven consumer goods plus 15. Jesus. Um, the plus 70% output's nice. The production efficiency growth and research speeds down, as well as the efficiency cap. 
Construction speed up was up by 30% for military factories, 15 for civvies. It's good. Now, obviously, one thing we're not going to have is stability. And that removes 10. That removes weekly stability minus 1. So that's great. Um, we also lose some stability elsewhere. Where is it? Oh, yep. Yeah, another minus 1 to weekly stability there. Another minus 1 there. We just got minus 10 there. So, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, Otto's here. No way. We're going to have Austria-Hungary coming back. And the Polish-Romanian alliance. Great. So if I go to war with Poland, I'm going to have to fight Romania as well. Grand. Just what I wanted. Just what I wanted. Well, Civil War in Spain's begun once again. It'll be interesting to see who wins this time. La Mancha. Why did you try take control of that, nationalists? That was a complete waste of your time. And Austria has unified with Hungary peacefully. Fantastic. And the Neutrality Act in the US. Great. Great. I've just noticed our construction speed on military factories is, and civvies is going to go through the roof. Because that gives us plus 15 for both there. Then that gave us 30 and 15. So they're up to 45 and 30% for their construction speed. Insane. Plus the bonus here for military factories, 10. And we'll grab the, uh, the civvy factory one as well. It's another 10. It's going to be insane. And Wrangle just got killed. Wow. It's currently unclear who will assume the mantle of Supreme Leader, but indicators point to be either Admiral Kolchak or General Larv Kornilov. Great. It's Kolchak. Fantastic. Which probably means he's going to come for our ass very, very quickly. Or maybe not. Actually, he will, because he can also do Absorb the Pact. Great. Great. Just, just great. Okay. The Russian threat. The Russian threat. With every passing day, it becomes more and more clear that Russia intends to wage war against us and annex our lands. The leadership uh, fiery rhetoric against us leaves no room for interpretation. For we to deal with this major threat to our nation, where General Staff demand that we form a united front against Russia, made up of other nations of the now defunct Pact of Petrograd, together we may have a chance of victory. Some of our more defeatist ministers and advisors suggest that we offer concessions and form a monetary tithe or give them some of our land. This would be a uh, would be a land a major blow against our country's morale and prosperity. But at least we could avoid war. What approach should we take? The Alliance of Kiev? No, I'm not giving them anything. The Alliance of Kiev. It really doesn't make much sense for an alliance to occur with an anarchist state. But you know what? Why the hell not? If everyone else wants to join me. United, we will stand together. As you can see, I've already made a fallback line. And yes, we are already going to be making fortifications. I might as well prepare myself for their, their invasion. Call upon Black Army veterans. This is going to be quite helpful. It's going to change Embrace Disorder by plus 15 on every... Oh, well, actually, minus 15 in supply consumption. So, minus 15, so it's going to be plus 5, plus 5, and plus 5. Well, minus 5 supply consumption and 1% recall population. Nice. We're going to still have the weekly stability loss, but, you know, we're anarchists. Why would we have stability? It's our boys, the other anarchists. Who we are not able to send any volunteers to, because we're not allowed to. Good luck, boys. I don't think you're going to win, but good luck to yous. If you do, then you'll have a friend in us. You'll have a friend in us. They're not going to win. They're not going to win. Why the hell did they spawn in the south? Okay, and you brought us back to Spain. Well done, UK. I love this. Uh... Oh, you're doing steady to go, but you're destroying the empire. Interesting choice there. Wow, the Germans have already taken Memel. They're being very... Oh, they've managed... Oshlus has obviously been bypassed. That's what's happening, because obviously Austria-Hungary... Well, it's not here yet, Austria-Hungary. They're too busy reintegrating railroads. Why? Just make Austria-Hungary and get the Czechs into your control. Ta-da. Ah, there's the last member of the Civil War. They're here, the Carlists. We're beginning to industrialize the nation, which seems... So random, considering um, our stance on things. But, um, yeah, that's that's cool. Monthly population is going to go down by my 20%, but it doesn't want to uh, industrialize. Well, we're doing a school in every town right now, which is going to remove low literacy, which means our research speed's not going to be hindered by that anymore, which is good. And uh, We are going to work down towards getting um, liberated Belarusian workers because, well, they're kind of not in a fashion with anyone right now. And they'd be easy pickings. Um, well, this is looking interesting in Spain. The anarchists do have a chance of winning this. They have a very good chance of winning this. They actually do have the bigger army, just ever so slightly. 
They do have the upper... Oh, and finally, Austria-Hungary has now unified and became a thing. Oh, oh, oh! Italy is going after Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia, who's guaranteed by the UK and the Czechs. Great idea that was. Well, well, fuck, here goes fucking World War Two. It's 1938, people. What are we playing at? My gosh. Oh, yeah, wow, who would have seen those coming? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, and look, Russia's fascist. They'll probably end up joining the faction. Because, you know, why wouldn't they? Anyways, let's liberate the world. We're so close to being able to go to war with Belarus. Belarus will probably instantly join the Allies now. Ah, uh, who doesn't love the good old Italian incompetency? Look at them. They've already lost Istria. They're into... Oh, Poland to Vinci Mori. They're in there to Veneto. They pushed pretty far into Pedimont, the French. So, they've lost Albania, lost Zara. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The Germans are even struggling to take out the Czechs. Love an early World War II. Love it. Oh my days. Italy. Italy is rubbish. Oh my gosh, Mussolini. That is tragic. The. the a decent chunk of their army is actually encircled up here as well, probably. Bravo, bravo, bravo applause to the incompetency there. Woo! So good, and Germany's still struggling to beat the Czech. Well, let's have a look at the casualties. Yeah, that, that pretty much sums up how that war is going for them. Useless. We're uh, preparing to invade Belarus right now. I am a little bit concerned that they may join a faction, and since the Poles are right on their border, uh, they might join the Mitsu Mori, and I don't know if Rom Romania is only guaranteeing Poland. So if Belarus does join Poland, I don't know if the faction will uh, form before, between these two. I don't know if Romania will join it, but just in case, we are pl placing troops on both borders. Oh, look at that. I was right. Italy's lay claim to the Greek territories. The idiots. Are they going to declare war on them? Let's have a wee look at the casualties. Wow. Wow, they are getting destroyed in Africa now. Oh, it's wartime. It's wartime. We we're actually struggling to push forward there. Um, I have lost 5,000 men. They were holding quite well, so we're just going to push a large mass of troops right in behind some of them. Ah-ha-ha! -ha. This war has been a little bit more costlier for us than I thought, but we have managed to break them here. Oh, that's looking so much better. I don't feel as bad now for struggling so badly against them. We're about to walk into Minsk as well, which will hopefully kill them off. Finally, that was much harder than uh, I was expecting it to be. Let's go ahead and just... I was going to pop at them. Let's just take all their land. Oh, uh, Italy's been reduced to simply just controlling F Corsica. That is that is now their capital. Corsica. Great. <laughs> Oh, my days. That is embarrassing. Oh, well. Here comes the Russians. I guess it's time to... Well, die. Oh, no. Here comes the Russians. They are here. They are here. Our fortifications are not helping us hold over here, really. Romania has decided to join Poland. Where... And we are imagined to hold relatively well. We've killed 92,000 now. So, can't complain about that. We're just going to have to keep chilling. Uh, we've got air superiority. I've done a very tactical play here. I've managed to leave a lot of the factory building here, so I can now just build all these factories in my area that I have left, which is so good. Pump out, pump out the factories. Pump them out. We need to build our army up, of course, if we're going to stand any chance of against defeating them. There goes Finland. Oh, and a big push. Oh, this might be the Russians now uh, deciding to come after us. I'm just going to have them station kind of central, just so they can uh, redistribute themselves to help the front when they can. Oh no, we got a little bit of a problem in the south here. A couple of divisions have landed. I've managed to quickly act to it. Nice, nice pilot. Hopefully the fleet... I've got them on convoy raiding now. It's a little late, to be fair, but... Oh shit, they're actually stranded. Go, 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 go. Secure it. Oh, more divisions were on their way. Right, good. So you can convoy raid now. Get convoy raiding. Well, India's went into a civil war. That's that's nice. The 
Fascist. Dominion of India. Is in... What? What on earth? Guided by Britain. Non aligned. Oh, do I? I'm not even gonna. Just, just ignore that, dude. Just ignore it. I don't quite know what the Russians are doing, but uh, they're thinking that they can take, uh, retake Manchuria, which is. Um, well, they get annexed war goals on Manchukuo and Minkuko. So, um, war with Japan? That would be quite nice. Um, I will definitely benefit from that starting. The Japanese should give them a run for their money. That could put Operation Crimea into um, into full swing, really. We do have to just catch up on our deficit of equipment. We've got anti-air in production as well now. We're going to put them into the infantry. Just to help with air superiority. We've even... Oh! Why why are you naval invading us? Yeah, that seems like an absolute genius idea. Yep. <laughs> See you later. Oh, the idiots. They've done it. They only went and done it. The Empire of Japan is now at war with the Russian Empire. You idiots. It's a shame I can't create a faction. Sad times. If only we could. I'll take the non-aggression pack with you. That's hopefully going to allow us to do a successful operation now. A lot of their troops are going to be heading out to Asia. And then they do have a million men, apparently. Japan is matching that, so bring on the conflict over there. <laughs> I don't know when this happened, but the Czechs are gone. They just accepted Austria-Hungary's little, little, little plea to join them, and they're now march doing march to the shore, which is ah, basically just claims and cores and everything. Well, I'll be interested to see what they go to. That's gonna be fun. I have just created a new template: the anarchist stormtroopers. Actually, it's just supposed to be anarchist stormtroopers. It's the big boys. And the Empire of Japan joined the Axis. Oofed. The hell? Okay, I don't know why it came back up, but uh, yay! Japan joined the Axis. Please don't fight the Allies. Don't join the fight against the Allies. Just focus. Oh, see if they join the Allies. A few moments later. That doesn't make any logical sense. Do not join the war. Why? Oh, for f <laughs> I just want to cry. Russia appears to have gained some faith and is now striking hard at us. The idiots, as they've lost loads now. They've lost loads. They're idiots. They're idiots. Desperate defense. Don't mind if I do. Well, Operation Crimea is is there, we just, oh, we don't have any convoys. So I've just, I've just had a wee look at their stock pads. <laughs> they have 66,000 guns. Right, we finally got some convoys. The Japanese were so nice to give us some. Ha ha ha. All we need now, superiority, which hopefully with these 22 subs, we'll be able to get it. And we have. Off we go. Operation Crimea is a go. Onwards, men. Onwards. We'll get a nice wee position over here, solidified. We don't need to defend in there. What we should maybe do is try and actually cut them off. Finally, we can do booming industries, which will have modern industrialization. Yay! Right, just what we needed. Mexico joining in. Because this war couldn't get any more stupider if they tried. Okay, Bulgaria's joined us. Good. Another ally. Well, they've not joined us, but they've joined the war. Good. Yes, that's what we needed. I don't know if it's actually what we needed at all because they do have a massive, a massive border with Yugoslavia and, well, the Allies, which does open up for a kind of disaster for the Axis, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully they were ready to go as well. Now we might be about to uh, encircle some divisions here, which is going to be quite nice. Oh yeah, we're pushing quite nicely forward here. Oh, look at that. We got them. The Austro-Hungarians haven't joined the war yet. They've joined the alliance, they've just not joined the war, which is odd. Okay, the Americans have decided to send me equipment. Why? Why me? Yeah, so I think I will go ahead and rename Crimea. It's mine now. Spent a lot of effort over here just trying to cut these, uh, this front into two. Uh, just to better help deal with the... Can Carl's abdicate it? Okay. Ah, because the fascists are now here. Would you like to join our faction? I feel like that'd be the move you'd make. 
Um, yeah, we're going to try and cut off all these Russians down here, because there's going to be a decent amount, and why not help out Iran, who's dealing with a massive problem down here? Oh well. Well, we've cut them off. We have cut them off. Just realised there's one nation I'm not at war with from the Allies. The UK. Thought they would have jumped straight in at the opportunity to fight me. But, no they're not. Siberia is looking a little bit, um, white. Well done Japan, you're doing good, you're doing good. And we're doing good as well, we're actually doing really good. All these Russians in here are dead, so. A win for us there, we just need to finish dealing with them. I think Iran's actually pushing back into them. Then we'll divert troops to maybe try and swing around and circle a lot of these guys. Well, the Caucasus is about to be secured by us, which is fantastic. It's a shame Iran's actually in this war, because we're going to eventually border the UK, which probably means that we're going to have to do this. Sadly. Nice, we're with the core Crimea. That's going to be nice, isn't it? Oh, big push in here. Yeah, I've had to redistribute some troops, because uh, they were getting a little bit too aggressive in here, and we were getting pushed back. Oh, the French are even over here. That's nice. Cute. Very cute. So we got communists in the Allies, fascists in the Allies. Only fascism remains. Why are they doing that when they're inside a faction that is full of democracies? Oh my days. And China's in, which is probably means they're going to join the Allies. Cure the faction. Or maybe they're not, but that's going to be a major issue for... Japan and Iran's capitulated, which means I now have another border to deal with. Great. Yeah, we are at war with the UK as well, just to point that out now. This has been disastrous. This has absolutely been disastrous. Yeah, do you know what? I think I'm going to leave the scenario right here because I've. My brain has been fried. It has been fried. The Allies. <laughs> big. Bugger off to you. Unbelievable. I'm surprised China hasn't joined it, to be fair. Oh, they're in the Chinese United Front. There you go. That's why. If they had joined... Oh. Yeah, the Allies have won this, haven't they? This this should not have happened. Fascists and Democrats working together. And again, you're getting communists, you fools. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, at least we tried. So if anarchy returns, if the anarchists took over Ukraine... The world turns to this crap. That's what we found out today. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall be back with something new very soon. Until then, take care. Bye for now.